morning. We're about 20 or 30 kilometers south of Mykolaiv, right near the Kursan Oblast border, maybe 10 kilometers from the Russian lines. I wanted to talk about some of my feelings about the Ukraine war. I don't know if I can manage that very well. Last night we were out in some kind of front, front line emplacements and we got stopped and detained for about a half an hour by a quite nice officer. Coming back through this village, which we passed on the way out, there were three or four artillery shots, Russian shots that hit the, hit the field just, just 50 meters this way. I missed the house where, that I'm sitting here and uh, caught the field on fire. So we were coming back through, saw the field on fire, figured those were the artillery shots, so we stopped. And then we realized the villagers were trying to put out the fire that was out of control. It looks like about, I don't know, 10 or 10 acres, 10 or 20 acres of fire with buckets of water pulled out of a well. So we popped around to the back to help them. One of the local guys took us home to wash off in his warm outdoor shower, which was deliriously nice. And uh, we were quite dirty at that point. And so we rinsed and then he invited us to stay for a drink of Moldavan wine, which was actually quite bad. And we did it. And then we decided to stay for dinner and stay the night. All night long, artillery fires coming in from the Russians, answered by the Ukrainians maybe a kilometer up the hill there. There's separate videos on that. 30 minutes after we halfway put out the fire, a rainstorm blew through luckily and, and drenched the fields and, and put out the dry grass and the uh, fire. So we stayed in this nice village, this lovely, lovely home with extensive gardens, strawberry fields, cherry trees, uh, ducks, chickens, goose, and uh, we listened to artillery go in and out all night long. I don't think anybody slept very well. I don't think you can really imagine what the villagers and the people under Russian bombardment are going through. Even just spending a night here is exhausting and not, re not really a problem for us. Um, you know, we got up in the morning, we had picked strawberries, we had cherries, we had a nice breakfast, we had a great dinner. But his family, his wife and two kids are in western Ukraine now for two or three months. This village has been under almost daily bombardment for two or three months. Now imagine your village back in Virginia, Middleburg, or somewhere, and it's in the middle, middle of an artillery duel. And what do I think about all this? You know, it's a shit show. It should never have happened. We should have supported these Ukrainians from 2014 on with a billion dollars in aid. And they potentially could have built up their uh, military defenses and their economy, most importantly. They've got to build their economy, build their wages so that they can actually have the economic base with 40, 45 million people to build up their whole nation with the rich black soil and their resources, their biogas, their biotech, their drones, their technology, their aviation. Remember, they built the Sputnik and the Antonov. These are the Ukrainians. They built a lot of the top Russian technological avionics. If they have the right funding and it goes to the small and medium businesses to grow new businesses and potentially fund the larger businesses properly and transparently so the money doesn't disappear, this country should be one of the richest countries in Europe. And then come December, we still were lollygagging on support. And then come February 24th, I think most of the Westerners figured Ukraine would fall quickly. 
we were sitting here in Kiev knowing Ukraine was never going to fall and that 200,000 Russians could never take the country. And no matter that the Russians had 16,000 artillery pieces compared to six or 8,000 American pieces and I don't know, maybe 1,000 or 500 Ukrainians, somebody looked that up. But we knew after the first week of the war when Ukraine fortified every village, every town, every city, every city block, emplacements, sandbags. I saw a guy, I saw a guy delivering sandbags to Maidan, the main square in the capital city, Kiev, in a grocery cart. That's how tough these people are. I saw soldiers going to the front line in Ladas, totally kitted out in combat gear with AK-47s, in smart cars, and one dude in a Range Rover. Okay, guess he was an officer. The point is, these people were never going to lose, and they're never going to give up, and the Russians have no chance of beating them. So, you know, it, in a sense, it breaks my heart that the American support in December, January, February was nothing. And even in March and April, it was slow. These guys need heavy artillery. They need a lot of weapons. They need night vision devices. They need all sorts of stuff, drones. They need a ton of support. And, you know, if the Russians lost 30,000, the Ukrainians certainly lost 10, though they're not publishing those numbers at all. And, um, you know, kind of back to the villagers. So Grandma Babushka's here, and when the artillery hit the field here, she was obviously upset 50 meters away and shaken. And we were talking to her later, and, you know, remember the Babushka's are the toughest nuts in the country. You don't... Uh, you don't get them to move during warfare or get too upset very easily. But she was shaking and, and nearly crying. And, you know, I want to cry for her also. I feel like these people should not be under bombardment. They should not be having to live in a home without their wife and children to maintain the, the farmland and the crops. If you listen closely, you can hear the bombardment in the background. Hey, come here, come here, come here. Look at this big beast, man. He's huge. And they got dogs and cats everywhere. You gotta love this country. Who's your white daddy? Huh? Good boy. Good boy. All right, say hi to the video. <laughs> he goes like, no, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stay here. <laughs> come over here. Come over here. Good boy. Now you see the best side of him. Anyways, I feel pretty, uh, lousy for these people and what they're going through and sure we're seeing the destruction on TV and in the news media with some pretty uh, clear pictures but I think you have to start to imagine yourself living in a village with beautiful cropland like this fruit trees strawberry fields onions potatoes everything you need and every day, artillery could potentially drop 50 meters from your house, if you're lucky. And, um, hey, get out of here. <laughs> I'll come back to you later. <laughs>